Hi, I'm Roy Collin, the host of the podcast. You can find everything about me by scanning the QR code there or going to RoyCollin.com and you'll find my six podcasts, The Podfather, Helping People Become Podcasters, The Awakening, Exposing Fraud and Corruption But With Solutions, The Crypto, All Things Blockchain Technology, Meditation Podcast, Speaking Podcast, and The Learn Polish Podcast. You can also help the show by actually making a donation, visiting the store, or helping my sponsors. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. Welcome to the Speaking Podcast. You can find all our episodes on speakingpodcast.com. My guest today, he's a poet. He was doing YouTubing channels as well. I'm not sure if he's still doing that, but he'll tell us about that. Podcaster, which I always love to talk. And he's an author, a new author. And his book is God is Trying to Talk to Me. Please welcome Dallin Candyland. Did I do the, is that the surname correct? No, I love the Candyland. It's, it's Candyland, but we love Candyland today. Yeah, Candyland. Yeah. yeah, we're going to have a sweet show, so that's why we say Candyland. So you might yeah. let the listeners know a little bit more about, about yourself. Yeah, Roy. So thank you so much for having me on. I am Dallin Candyland, and I went to school for marketing at BYU, Idaho. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, served as a missionary for that church and have just been kind of bouncing around trying to find my place. I came out with a book recently, God is Trying to Talk to Me. It's like a book of poems from one of the most vulnerable times of my life, which is after I graduated from college and, you know, just kind of had some things sort of fall apart and I just had to reevaluate and get to know myself at a deep level. And it was uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. And now I'm on the other side. I was like, I look back like a year ago, I was finishing up meeting with my therapist so I'm like we've made progress and I'm just like Whoa! but it's it's crazy man it's a ride dude life is a ride brilliant so I suppose the YouTube channel was kind of one of the first things that you do because I know that my youngest son he's actually trying to build it and it ain't easy so like how did you get into that and it was gaming I believe that you were doing was it yeah as uh, 2012 I had spent some time watching people play video games with like their friends and family. And I remember watching them and be like, I could do this better. I have a really fantastic group of friends. We're pretty charismatic. And so, you know, we made some videos. We put them on Facebook. And of course that like nothing happened with that. And my friend put them out there and all respect to him. I kind of realized like we're running out of time. Time is just doing its thing. And so, you know, right before my junior year of high school started, I decided to, hey, let's just go all in with this. So we got a camera, set it up on top of some encyclopedias and pointed at our TV and I made the YouTube channel. And then I just kind of spearheaded that. And yeah, we got 100 subscribers, well, 64 subscribers in our first year. And it made a big impact for people that it was able to reach. We just wanted it to have like a good vibe, good atmosphere, a place where somebody could just chill and, and watch. Even though it was like camera quality, you get away with that back in 2012. So, you know, Mario Kart, Smash Bros. A lot of those videos are still pretty highly ranked if you type in the, the exact thing. And yeah, man, that was, that was a big part of it. And, you know, I started it in high school and I learned a lot that I love just talking. And it started really rough though. If you go back to those first videos, it's rough. I think I did 13 or 14 takes for that first video. That was just to make it sound okay. Like, this is okay. But, like, to me, for me to do that now, it'd be, like, impossible. Like, to, it'd be way, 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 way beyond anything that that 16, 15-year-old could have put out. You know, at first it was like, wow, look, I got this cool power up. Wow, this is awesome. This is cool. And I was really trying to sound excited, but it just, a lot of it takes time, really. And I look at um, my son watching these. They're, they're Polish channels because you know I'm living in, even though I'm Irish, I'm living in Poland. And I see some of the guys, they're doing that. They're basically playing a game. They've got the little screen at the side that you see them. And they're, as you say, like, they have to kind of push the energy, even though you know it's good. But they're like getting millions and millions of downloads and like they have loads of cars and that. They're, there's people making a massive living on it. And I, I'm shocked that people actually sit down and watch somebody play the game because when I grew up I used to play the games I don't think I used to even hate when I had to wait my turn for somebody else but there, there's a big market for people to actually you know just watch people playing the game I presume it's kind of learning as well a certain game they get stuck on a certain level and by watching somebody who's experienced in it he's showing them the tips and tricks so that they can progress yeah somebody who has been through the game can help anybody that is going through the game right now and I think that's life 
I think that is so many different things, but yeah, that it's encouraging when somebody has said, I've been through this before. You just need to have this specific item configuration or have some thing to make it a little bit more joyful or less painful. And all of a sudden your brain is like, okay, now it's not such an unknown. I have this person to help me out and I can, I can go forward with, with more confidence. So yeah, it makes a big difference. And I know for some of the people that watched our old videos back in the day, you know, you try to keep in contact with some of the fans. There's this one dude and he moved from uh, Venezuela to Florida and he was going to get into some gangs and everything like that. And he found our channel and I didn't find this out until a couple of years later. He's like, I learned a lot of English because I'd watch your videos nonstop. It just felt so good. You know, I just felt like, like I was part of your family kind of, and I never gone to any gangs. I never did any of that stuff. And so it can really create this sense of belonging that you don't get anywhere else. And so I love being able to provide that for people, even if it's in a really small way. Cause again, like the energy and stuff, it, it vibes and uh, it can really calm a person down if they can't get it at home. Well, six. I mean, I've never thought of it like that, but I mean, I know with the podcast that you put it out, you, you will never know the impact that you have. Well, so, yeah, it's the same on our YouTube channel. That's a fantastic, you know, to hear that, that somebody actually went down the right road just based on looking what you've done. So fantastic. So with the poetry then, is it something you were always into poetry or how did the poetry kind of side come about? Poetry is interesting. When I was 15 years old, I was in an English two class, English two honors class. Haha. Yeah. But yeah, I liked, I liked, I kind of liked that. I liked English, but I remember we were doing like a study about kind of more painful times in history and like World War II and stuff. And we were supposed to write like a poem about something related. I don't know how the assignment came about but something related to what we were learning. And I wrote this tearjerker about this kid who was never going to see his mom again and didn't want to leave her. And my teacher read that and was like, Dallin, are you okay? <laughs> it's like, are you doing all right, man? Like, this is beautiful, but this is also painful. And so I think that was the first glimpse of like, I'm very good at writing about emotion and poetry is emotion and speaking and so the poetry came about naturally over time and i think it's in 2020 there's this one day after college and i was living in this apartment where the dorm was seven feet high i'm six foot five and a half and so it was i was feeling cramped really cramped and i went to bed it was like midnight i have this adhd brain that's going all over the place i'm gonna lose my mind if i stay in this silly apartment so i left and my curfew was at midnight, but I was like, I need my sanity. And so I left, you know, it was like a little after midnight, just went on a walk. It was in Rexburg, Idaho. I laid in the snow. It's like, man, this is good stuff. And I just had it in my mind, like this thought, the hope I can't see. So I wrote that poem and I wrote this other poem. And then, yeah, in 2022, after graduating from college and a lot of things not going how I'd hoped or planned or whatever. You know, I wrote a lot of poems and this year I've written over a hundred poems. So I write, yeah, it is kind of escalated, but that experience I had as a sophomore was a lot of the genesis of it. So you mentioned the ADHD. Is that something you've had from a young age or is it something that kind of kicked in the teenage years? So this is one of the most interesting parts I, I can, I've discovered about myself. I believe that it's something that's been in there for a long time. And sometimes it just takes the right circumstances for it to kick in. So I, I can think of moments when I was like 12 or 13, where it was, you could definitely tell. However, not making the basketball team when I was 14, 15, got me to be in the basketball manager and doing track. And that, that basically made it being on that track of doing track made it. So I slipped under the radar. Nobody had any idea I had ADHD. And I found out when I was on my mission. So. I was serving in Star Idaho, this small little town, and we had this giant snowstorm came come in. I remember we were, you know, waiting and, and hearing that it was going to be crazy, and we got a text like, do not leave. You cannot leave. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay, okay. And then 
it's like, okay, you can go back to your house and get stuff, but after that you can't leave. And I remember going back to my apartment, it was freezing cold. We live uh, at the top of this like dog shop place. Anyway, it was, it was freezing cold and the first day I was okay. We had a ton of books, all these church books. I like read books for like six, seven hours straight, you know? reading all these different books probably wasn't straight, but you know, I was reading, 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 reading the next day, you know, all these people we were supposed to, we wanted to see, we couldn't see, I couldn't go outside. My brain started going nuts and just like this person and just all over the place. And so we went to get me talking with a counselor and long story stories, like you probably have ADHD. It's something I tried hiding or fighting in college. And that never worked out very well for me. But ever since I've had those moments, I really tried to embrace it. You know, this one time I was really stressed out about this exam. Yeah, I had two or three hours left before it closed. And I had studied a little bit for it. But I was like, okay, I can study more for it or I can go on a run and just trust that. So I went on the run and I just came to that test and just went after it. And I don't even remember what I got on that test, but I felt better about it. And for me, a lot of it comes back to the the feeling aspect and the trust aspect. And I feel like with ADHD, your feelings can fly all over the place. And when I go on a run or something, it's like, it's sort of like, it's like an airplane. You like pick up the airplane, like bring it back down to earth and say like, I love you and kiss it and put it back in the air or something. <laughs> it's like, it's beautiful when you could hear yourself, but I feel like a lot of ADHD people or anybody in something that feels unique to them, they don't feel very heard. And you gotta do those things to help yourself hear yourself. And did they try to push you on meds for that? Did you stay up? So yeah, that's that's an interesting story. You know, I had one person that was like, You're you're depressed, you need medication so bad, like <laughs> you talk to me for a It's like you don't know me, dude. You don't know me. I'm sorry. It's like, you don't, you don't know me, dude. And he's like, if you get medication, I'll talk with you again. I was like, I just need somebody to talk to. Like, I don't want these strings attached to it, you know? And so, yeah, I took a little bit of medication. I took some bupropion for the depression, but my personal belief it was, it was all the HD the entire time. And there's times where I was like, there was those depression like symptoms. Like I don't have any interest in things. I believe that was lack of novelty. I didn't have any novelty. ADHD people need novelty and they need structure. So, but did I have those moments where I was definitely very depressed? Sure. But I wouldn't say I have like depression, if you will. And like with the the therapist, it wasn't the therapist that made you go on meds. Was it that was uh, that you were dealing with? Was it? Yeah. So there was the therapist from my mission who was super good. And then there's this other therapist I, I talked with that I met with once. And, and I don't know, it's interesting because I ran into him at, at, by, by, I don't believe in coincidence, but you know, by this weird thing that happened, I ran into him a couple of times, seemed like a great guy. And then when we were actually just talking in his office, it was like a flip, like a switch flipped, man. And he's just like, very just like, you are suffering more than you need to. And you need, you need, you need a, uh, you need medication. It was tough because that was a point in my life that I did feel very alone and it was my birthday and I called and said, Hey, I'm, I'm here to set up a, a counseling appointment. They're like, what's your birthday? It's like, it's today. <laughs> Shit. It was real though. It was so real. I was like, I was away from family. I love my family, but I just didn't feel like I was doing what I need to do on this earth. And for me that, that eats me up, you know, when I feel like I'm not doing good things of what I have. And yeah, so it, it's, it's, um, acceptance and belonging is a huge thing. I wasn't really feeling that a ton with my roommate situation at the time. Felt like an outcast. Cause I wasn't watching the super inappropriate shows they were watching and stuff like that. It's like, I'm like, I'm me and I'm not going to change that for anybody else. So with, uh, your book, what what I could uh, see from it is like you kind of wear your emotions on your heart. Your your so we kind of know from reading it what mode you're in, and then just how you got you've kind of gone through the journey to kind of you know from, say let's say from the darkness to the light and how things have improved and just 
Like, did you notice yourself as you were kind of transitioning, going from kind of at one stage? Because obviously when you reread it and everything, you, you kind of remember. But did, did you know the moment where you had made a little jump? Hey, it's kind of getting better. And was there anything in particular that happened that kind of made that kind of transition? Yeah, there was a lot of moments and, and you can definitely like tell with yourself when something has improved or changed. You know, you look at, I think it was July, mid July of 2022, when I met with, uh, you know, one of my you know church leaders and said, I didn't need to talk to somebody. Like, I don't really feel anything. I am very frustrated at all these different things. Compare that to November 14th or 15th, I think of last year which was when I was leaving the therapist's office and I was like, yeah, I'm leaving. And, you know, I learned that I really liked drumming. I'd forgotten about drumming. I drummed a little bit when I was like two. And there's this one day when I left my therapist appointment and I got out a, a pencil and another pencil and I just started like drumming in my car and I had such a fun time with it. And so I sometimes still do that just for fun. And I discovered a lot of things about myself. And I think that it's one of the biggest signs that you are, on the right track that you're having growth. And then July 2nd, kind of a long story short, but I, I uh, slashed my foot open on an e-bike. I was in an e-bike accident and ne needed to be in a wheelchair for a little bit while being a counselor for the strength of youth program that the church did and got to be pushed around by all these youth at these colleges and still got to help out a ton. And so I, I think that was another turning point was like, Nothing is going to prevent God from helping me. I could slash my foot open, you know, like I was I okay. So we do need to tell the story a little bit. So we went on down this like river, the Provo river, and I was wearing these flip flops. And then when we got done, we ate some sandwiches and this guy was like, Hey, I have an e-bike if anybody wants to ride it. And I was like, sure. Why not? And I got on, he's like, okay, just be very careful because when it picks up, when it gets momentum, you're not going to be able to turn as well. And I was like, okay, okay. So I got on and I'm going, and I can still imagine it. You know, I was like, everything was good. It's in this tiny parking lot. I was like, okay, this is good. I'm moving and, and move it. And then I need to make this kind of sharp turn quickly. And the bike, I need to slow it down. I slowed it down a bit too much. The bike started falling on me and Thankfully, the shock absorbers, you know, bounced back up. But here I am straddled over the motorcycle of the bike. And I'm just like in shock. And the guy's all the way over there, you know. And I, I ended up moving the, the throttle and the bike did a complete circle. Like it turned back on and my left foot was on the ground and it just got completely shredded, you know, around and around and around, you know, from the ground, from being on the ground. And... Yeah, like it was extremely painful, <laughs> but I had this flip flop on and I don't have it in this room, but I call my miracle flops. I try to wear them wherever I go. And the most painful part, like the flip flop took most of the beating. If I didn't have those flip flops on, I probably wouldn't have a foot. And if I did, it would probably be in some kind of cast thing. But instead I you know, was able to get it looked at wheelchair. I was running in like a month, another month or so, and I'm doing a, a half marathon on Saturday. So and I ran four miles last night. So like I, I run all the time. And I think that's a part of my kit. That's a part of me as something I need to keep doing. And even if I had an experience that seemed like that part of my identity was going to be taken out, it didn't mean that it was going to be gone and that I could be healed much quicker than I thought, at least in that respect. But it's all like a, it's a day by day thing. And what I really learned to do, Roy is like, you know, just to appreciate it. Like with these things, some of that poetry, there's no way I could have written that if I was in like a better state of mind. And some of that most powerful poetry I have ever written, like some of the most hopeful, like literally one of the most hopeful poetry I've written was when I was in like the most yuck, like yuck, I don't like this periods of life. And so it's just taught me a lot about the the power of the human soul. So yeah, it's been a journey though. Right now I just tell myself every day, I remember where I was a year ago, I'm staying on the path and that is great. I think a lot of the times it's kind of finding what kind of lightens your soul. I know you said the drumming, the running, 
Just keep doing things that you love, whether it's listening to music and stay away from the things that you know. It's just paying attention to what affects your mood. So I I was reading uh, uh, you, Alaska. So you've been to Alaska? Yeah, I was in Alaska in June before July when I had the wheelchair thing. But yeah, I was in Alaska for the one of the camp counseling things. It was it was like a different planet. It was beautiful. I loved it there. And were you there long? How long were you there? You might tell me a bit about Alaska. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it just about two weeks. Yeah, they had a, a, it's just June. So it's light for about like 21 hours in the day. So you get up at like 6 a.m. and it's completely bright. And it's really bright even when it was like 10, 11 p.m. going to bed. And it's just really nice. I mean, just like deep forests, just really nice forests and mountain forests everywhere you look. And I got to have some of the, you know, local cuisine. I think I had a deer burger or something or an elk burger or something like that. And that was, that was good. Or reindeer, reindeer burger, I think. And that was, that was good. <laughs> But yeah, it was just it yeah. Santa didn't San to de- deliver any presents that year because we ate the burgers. So with the the podcast, then your podcast is called Yield Today, yeah. Which with, with Alan. So you've nearly four hundred episodes. I see. You're that's a lot. Like I mean, most people throw in the toll after ten. So you're doing you're doing well. So, um, when when did you start? Why did you start? And what's it all about? Yeah, so I've going back to the feeling thing. I've had many experiences in my life where I meet somebody and I'm just able to like feel for them immediately and just have that compassion on them. And so I had a number of experiences with that my first semester of college. And uh, there was a couple times where I, where I would talk with people for like, you know, an hour and I'd talk with another person for an hour. And then all of a sudden it's like eight or 9 p.m. and I haven't done any homework. And I was like, this is not sustainable as much as I love just talking with random people because there's thousands of people at BYU Idaho and most of them have, you know, very similar beliefs as me. And I found a lot of them were going through things. We're all going through things. It's always beautiful when you can talk to somebody about it. So the podcast came from a desire for people to hear and be, be heard without me actually being there with them. And it started you know, August 24th, 2019. And I was working at a potato farm, digging some potatoes with some friends. And one of them was listening to his Dungeons and Dragons podcast. And I was like, huh, he's listening to this podcast while we're just digging up potatoes. I really need to get my podcast started. And I'd had some ideas for it, but then, yeah, I don't know. It's just, just the combination of the heat and everything else. I was holding my shovel. I just kind of like threw it down on the ground and, you know, sort of thing. And it was like, you know, I'm starting my podcast tomorrow. And, and I did, you know, I made sure it got started. And I think the YouTube channel really taught me a lot about seeing things through having like a belief in something before it even gets anywhere at all. And yeah, I just knew I was going to stick with it for a while because of the YouTube channel, you know, that had over 500 videos before we finished it and it had a hundred in its first year. So yeah, I knew I was going to stick with it with the long game and I'm just excited to see where it leads. It's been fun. I met a lot of really cool people and that's, that's that man. Well, I know you talk about journaling as well and I know the benefits of journaling, but for those that don't journal, you might kind of, why you start to journaling and what you get out of it. Yeah, I think it just gives your brain a place to play. We need to play. That's so, so, so important. And your brain can jump around and, and just kind of have this ecosystem of friendliness and just kind of be itself. And the cool thing with journaling, too, is you can do like a guided journal. Like, I here's three things I'm grateful for today. Here's this and this. I'm always changing how I do my journals. And then I also do brain dumps on 750 words. It's a website. I do that every day. I did that before jumping on today. And that helps me have a greater sense of clarity. And there's a quote that says, writing makes an exact man or woman, you know? So like when you can write something down, it's just kind of like what you're putting out into the world. It's very more concentrated and focused. And that's how you're going to get people to one, listen to you, but it's also how you're going to be heard. And actually the message you want to be heard is, is that's what's going to be communicated. You know, that's one of the biggest tragedies I think is when somebody wants to speak and they don't feel safe doing so. And so they never do, or they hold it back. And then, you know, 
It's like, we kind of have this crossroads. I, I talk about this all the time. We have like this crossroads, we've run into somebody and we don't really know what's going to happen. But if we act with kindness and compassion towards that person, regardless of what they're going through, it's going to be better if we do run into each other again and we'll be better for it. And we don't really know why we'd run into some people, but it's always good to act with compassion towards them. And you mentioned that w website uh, for the words. What, what is that and how does it work? Yeah, 750 words has been a game changer for me. I started it November 18th, 2022. And like I said, I write 750 words in it every day. So how it works is you jump on and it just has like a counter, which ADHD people we love, like point system, everything. So it has like a counter and it's going up as you're typing. And then when you hit 750 words, has a bunch of confetti hit the screen. It's like, yeah, you did it. And then, you know, but you can just share whatever is going. I mean, you can write anything. So I've been writing anything and everything. And that has given me a lot of, again, the the place for my brain to, to play. And it's really, really, really effective. You know, I can go back to any of the entries I wrote. I can search by word. I can do any of that stuff. And it's super inexpensive. I think they're kind of a very undiscovered, very underrated platform, but I think we'll be seeing it more and more in the next couple of years. But yeah, it's called 750 words. And I wrote, I've written over 600,000 words in it in the last year. So a lot of writing and it's kind of cool because it, it just rewards you so well. So in February, I did 50,000 words in a month, which is like the NaNoWriMo thing. They have a NaNoWriMo badge. And I was like, what if I just kept this up and so then I did five months straight of the, you know, at least 50,000 words. And I think I had one that was 49,000. And yeah, I mean, I wrote, there was a couple days ago where I wrote 10,000 words in one day. Cause I was really like, I want to see if I can do it. So 750 words really like just helps me with that itch and I can write and it, it'll turn it. That's how I get my podcast episodes. That's how I get articles. That's how I get a lot of the launching pads for poetry and yeah i can write about anything in there and and i do and it's fun is it something that's just personally for you or is it something that's actually shared that other people can see it when you write yeah so if it works it's completely private so it's really private and they have like a public accountability like with like a monthly challenge so i'm in that for this month and it's just like you say, like, this is what I'm going to do. This will well, I'll do if I don't do it, you know, be consistent for this month. And it's just kind of cool to see all these other things that people are doing. Like this one guy, I mean, I'm super curious about people. So like when somebody says like, if I complete this challenge, I am going to have this really awesome ice cream. And if I don't, I will not have that super awesome ice cream. You know, and it's just interesting, gives you a glimpse at, you know, what people are motivated by. And yeah, so there's that, you have that. And then you can also write encouraging messages for other people. So I did that while, when I hit a couple of the milestones, it's like, hey, this is helping me a lot. And then anybody can see that if you search for it. And some of them are like displayed on the front of the website. But yeah, it's all completely like nobody could like go into and find you like when I wrote or what I wrote. Like that's all completely, yeah. Everybody has their own thing and they keep it that way. Like finally, the the book, God is trying to talk to me. You're just releasing it. What's your plan? Are you actually, uh, are you self-publishing it? Are you planning on trying to get it into bookstores? What's your whole aim target for it? Right now it's podcasts, so I have this one, and then I have another one next week that I believe will get the podcast into a lot of places it needs to be, and then, and yeah, paperback, and then Audible, which I'm super excited for. Like Audible is, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for it, because I've been doing the podcast and the, the writing and all that stuff for a long time, so I have very much worked on the podcasting voice, and that's kind of the plan right now, but just kind of taking a baby these steps and just trusting the process with it and enjoying each day. But yeah, I, I go out and talk to people every single day. I usually talk to a couple of new people every day and now having the book, it makes it really easy to talk to anybody. And I've already done that on runs and other stuff. So 
just kind of that and planning to start speaking at schools and that to help get the book out there and just kind of see where it takes me. And um, with the audible, did you have you recorded it already? Have you actually or you're planning on recording it? Or so I recorded a couple, but I'm not quite sure if those would be the final ones in the whole book because the book ended up being a little bit different than some of those recordings. Like some of those recordings were like with poems that weren't in the book. So I'm not sure, but I'm going to make sure the audible gets out because one thing that this has all taught me, it's like you're just leaving money on the table or lives improved and helped on the table. Like the book dropped yesterday and I had a friend, you know, today's November 14th. I had a friend be like, Hey, this helped me know that God is definitely looking out for me. And we're good friends and we've had these talks and stuff, but like he's able to have a more personal experience from the book the second it dropped, you know, like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? We need to just get it out there. And it's so easy to delay that kind of stuff. And I'm like, what are we doing? So yeah, no, having those clear deadlines and sticking to it, but at the same time, enjoy it every single day. Well, I wish you super success with the book launch and uh, you might uh, and your podcast, of course, you might let people know how they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me at Yield Today with Dow and Camblend and it's on Apple Podcasts. And there's also the book. You can find the Amazon link. I'm sure Roy will have that in there. And those are the main ways to reach me. I mean, I have LinkedIn and others as well. But yeah, those are the main ones. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll make sure I put all the links on both the audio and the video. Thank you very much, Stella. Thank you, Roy. Well, so that's all for the Speaking Podcast. Until next week. Take care. So I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. As mentioned at the start, you can find my six podcasts on RoyCollin.com or scan the QR code. If you're looking to start a podcast or do a podcasting tour, help with that. Also, if you're looking for a virtual assistant, we also have that service. And you can help the show by visiting the store, supporting our sponsors, or making a donation. Until next week, take care.